Okay, welcome. This is my second attempt at an instructional video. I'm going to be going over the very basically basics again. Um, to start off with, just explain what this is about. Um, obviously, um, I'm not the best of players, but I do know all of the controls of the game, and that's all we're going to be going over. Uh, no high level stuff, no fancy mac my macro tricks, no micro tricks, nothing like that. Um, I'm going to make, be making a long video now, it's going to be probably an hour or so long um, so I'm just going to tell you what's going to be in it in what order so you can skip to the bits you're interested in. To start off with I'm just going to go through the interface, um, what options I recommend setting up, hotkeys, how they work, what to do with those, then I'm going to go into just a random unit tester map I'm going to build some stuff I'm going to show you how you can manage different groups of things to do different things then I'm going to go through each race individually um, I'm not going to do any build orders or anything that's worth copying in that regard but I'm just going to go through it methodically I'm going to show you how you should be going back to your base controlling your base with the keyboard um, rehocking all your units as you make them that kind of stuff um, just basically the good habits you want to get down at any level of play which will make you better um, I'm not going to name names but I do know there are like high level pro players that don't have all of these habits and I'm not going to say that if you suddenly have these you'll be better than them but um, it's true that if they were to pick up these these things then they would be slightly better so it's, it's always worth doing it's worth if you're a beginning player picking these up now when it's easier to instead of developing bad habits or well, not bad habits but less in, less efficient habits okay so into the menu I'm gonna start with the options just the, the general stuff on under the graphics um, if you're really interested in being pro or you really you really want to take this seriously um, the pros quite often have their texture quality on ultra or high and they have their graphics quality on low um, I think they fiddle around with that but the idea is the models are low and the uh, shaders and the effects are all low um, I think the terrain quality will be low as well maybe high but the idea is um, for cloaked units um, if the quality of the cloaking field effect is low but the texture is high it shows up really well well better than it does with any other combination of graphics options um, I'll quick, make a quick mention about the voice chat um, sort of never used but it is actually a good voice chat uh, program the only problem is especially for Windows users you have to unlock some ports I can't remember what they are off the top of my head as you can see I don't use it but if you're interested there is that okay so mouse sensitivity uh, I'm going to recommend away from anything divisible by five uh, just move it up one or down that adds a, a small amount of crispness to the response I don't know why honestly no idea uh, I recommend if you've got a low sensitivity working it up um, into the sort of the 80s um, I think if your mouse sensitivity is too high unless you've just got really good finger control you'll, um, you'll find it harder to get a good click on a small unit but um, it, it's good to have high sensitivity because then you can move your mouse across the screen easily um, and if you get good at it you can just snap to the unit you want grab it, do stuff um, recommend disabling the windows key I'm sure we've all at one time or, time or another clicked that and then when we finally get back into the game found ourselves dead so that's good we like that um, also if you have yours in full screen mode graphics full screen mode instead of windowed of some description then the alt tabbing is not the greatest so it might be worth disabling alt tab as well um, it depends how you use the game if you do other things and obviously if you've got it in windowed mode that's irrelevant um, mouse scroll that's basically the win the middle button on your mouse if you click that down 
and move your mouse, you'll scroll around. Um, I don't use that. Or is it? Oh no, sorry, that's that's drag scroll. Drag scroll is that. Uh, don't know why you'd invert drag scroll. Mouse scroll, definitely you want mouse scroll. Sorry about that. Um, I also recommend upping your mouse scroll speed because it starts up at 20, so is your keyboard. I don't recommend using drag scroll or keyboard scroll for actual play. Uh, mouse scroll is the best one. Turn that up. That's basically keep cursor to the edge, makes your whole screen camera view move in that direction. Um, the reason why I recommend increasing the speed is you won't have to have your cursor at the edge of the screen for so long. And um, with some practice, you can dart about faster and you can generally better okay gameplay this is the really important stuff uh, unit status bars I recommend always having that on uh, not because that will show not just yours but your opponent's health um, that can be good so if you, you start picking off low health units um, it will also show the energy or mana that units have um, so if you can just have a quick glance and notice all of your spellcasters have no energy or you can notice that your opponent's got some spellcasters hidden in his group um, stuff like that it's really good to have it also has progress for a creation of units or buildings anything like that that's, that's all automatically always up uh, if you don't have that up just hold the alt key and it will bring all of that up uh, the flyer helper um, that's really good I'm actually just going to go into a game now to show what that does because I think it's really important Obviously, I recommend always having that on. Okay, here we are. I've just got this random unit test map. I do enjoy this map. Um, there's not a great amount of space to play or diverse terrain, but just for testing and microing, it's good. Plus, you can play against yourself. So, I'm going to start this off and give my infestors max energy. Now, as you can see, these mutalisks have a little line. This is the flyer helper. This shows um, where the air unit is related to the ground and that's important because if you want to cast spells you have to cast it on the ground to hit air units as well. So if I put this where the actual model of the mutilus is, I'm not really hitting many of them at all. That would be kind of tragic and every, every infestor will die. But if I put it where the clump of air helpers is that's the lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna grab these, attack move, and that is what that's all about. What I'm doing here is I'm pressing the F key to bring up fungal growth. We'll talk about these in a minute. But, uh, while we're here actually, just see these little letters here. These are the, the hotkeys. I'm going to talk about the option to enable this in a minute. I do, uh, do recommend that. And this is the energy status bar as well. I do recommend having the status bars always on. Um, okay. So that was the flyer helper. As you can see, it's very useful. Um, smart camera pan. I don't recommend that. That's basically when you move your camera quickly somewhere, it will um, try and glide for you, and it looks very pretty. If you're streaming commentary or producing commentary videos or anything like that put that on it will sort of neaten up the camera movement but if you're playing all it means is your graphics cards taxed a bit and you can't move your camera around as quickly so that's not good reduce violence if um if you're a wussy display build grid i recommend that as well i'm going to quickly go into a little demo of that because i think it's really useful Okay, this is the micro tester. This is a pretty good map, um, especially if you've got a friend you want to practice micro against. You can just make all your units and do stuff. It doesn't, however, have burrow on it, which does annoy me a little bit as a Zerg player. Um, but anyway, we're talking about the build order grid. I ha not build order, just the build grid. Now this is a building. It's the only building you can make on this map, by the way. Um, and you can see the, the standard building size, but around it, I can't point with my mouse, but around it is a little grey grid. And if I move that towards this rock, you can see that it becomes sort of brownish. And if I move to these cliffs, it has the same colour. So um, you can, it probably doesn't help that the cliffs are brown, but you can tell that 
you can't build there without having to move your building on it and if you've got buildings around I do like that animation and you can you can see the buildings with it as well I do think it's good it also shows you like the size of things and the things around it um, okay so in replays I recommend having the replay time information um, but that's not necessarily that, that useful because there is a game timer which will show up as well um, but that's good um, and the user interface I recommend having the menu bar either hidden or unclickable because that's the the bar at the top in game um, and if you see it but it's unclickable it'll show you the hotkeys but all you really need to know is F10 for menu to exit I recommend having that either hidden or unclickable because uh, if you're in game and you move your mouse and accidentally click on it that will prevent you from doing anything and if you're jerking your mouse about like that you're probably panicking which means you don't want to be unable to do stuff at that particular moment in time so that's good I've got it on normal at the moment because I'm using the F10 key to start and stop my video recording but when I'm done with that I'm going to stick it back on hidden I have it on hidden control groups I'm also having that on normal just in case I decide to use that for demonstration person purposes later but I have that as unclickable um, I don't necessarily like hidden because it's nice to just have a little display of what you've got as control groups it doesn't take up much space although I do know some pro players uh, liquid Tyler uh, have said that they have theirs um, hidden because it's just taking up screen space that they don't need to be taken up. Um, the alerts in game will appear here anytime a unit um, research or building has finished doing, creating, whatever, it will come up with a little alert in this area and say this is done. Uh, if you click on the little icon it will take you there and select whatever it was but the main thing is um, at least if you're starting out um, it can be good to just look over here every now and then if you see an alert it'll be like ah oh, something's happened barracks is, is created I need to make a marine with that add an add-on my queen's done my lava have popped I need to do something about that so it'll be good to keep you on the ball um, so that way you can turn just looking over here into uh, remembering quite a lot of things until you get good enough that you just remember them anyway game timer just above the mini map here there's a little game timer I'm going to mention now that in game time doesn't necessarily translate to out of game time because um, well it does translate if you're playing on normal speed however almost everyone online plays at faster speed which means that game time runs faster than real world time don't know why Blizzard did that it's just weird um, I think it's so that the building creation times and unit training times and research times all line up to the um, the in-game clock um, so it makes sense but it's also a bit weird why didn't they just base it all on the one game speed that everyone was going to use I don't know uh, world, world object tooltips that's basically Zelnaga towers and rocks it doesn't really make any difference subtitles that's for the campaign uh, command hotkey text I recommend this I severely recommend this um, I mentioned it earlier it's on the command button in the side it will show a, le a letter which is the corresponding keyboard shortcut to that command um, and that just it helps so you can just glance at this without actually clicking or hovering your mouse over it and it will tell you the key you can tap the key and it's always best to use the keyboard wherever you can use the keyboard can't stress that enough okay uh, Battle.net um, recommend reducing toast notifications from 2 to 1 because they're stupid and annoying maybe get rid of it it's your language filter if you're a wussy auto join pr private channels if you've got friends and have channels that's good everyone's welcome in my channel that I've got SNA SC2 I'm not going to explain what that's all about, but that's the channel I hang out in. You're all welcome. 
Okay. Now we're going to go to the hotkeys. I'm just going to go through this. Obviously, that's my name, Pete. Um, the standard is basically... Um, well, it, it's sort of not that intuitive, but it's similar to the Brood War, Starcraft Brood War hotkeys that they had. Um, sort of A for attack, H for hold position. They've changed probe from P to E so your hand can stay around the left edge of the keyboard mostly but um, I do recommend however the grid if you're just starting out this option is the grid what that does is instead of having a different hotkey for each unit E, M, E for probe, M for mothership, C for chrono boost, C lip I mean that's fairly intuitive because the letters always have something to do with the um, the the command that you're using. But the grid, however, I'm just going to make a note of the probe here. The probe here is the top left, and this is the bottom left. On the grid, um, the probe would be Q, and chrono boost would be Z, and this structure here corresponds to the command button layout so um, T is attack instead of A and uh, I can't remember what the rest of these are I think that's patrol hold position stop move anyway uh, it, it's it's more intuitive once you get into it because um, I think you, you can rework the grid as well if you want but uh, I it, it's a good habit to get into because it's more intuitive especially if you want to play different races because then you don't have to learn new hotkeys you can just glance uh, for anything you want to do researching upgrades you can just glance down and be like that's in this position therefore it must be Z it's almost always Z or Q or T that you want uh, except for obviously creating units because the, there's a lot of units so I recommend that I also recommend yes yes it's stored well done Global hotkeys, camera. Now I've changed. Normally this will be F5, F6, F7, and F8 here. I've changed those uh, to create camera location. Uh, it's a bit hypocritical because my keyboard's got a crap F key, so I don't use these. Um, but I'm Zerg, so I've got other ways of doing it. I use my queens to get about my base instead of using these. But if you're Terran or Protoss, you don't have that. So I recommend. Um, you doing this and then you change these obviously to the corresponding ones so that it's intuitive however the F the F1 key is as standard the idle worker key um, I'm not entirely sure where that is but I've changed that to F8 control groups maybe um, unit management idle worker F5 so you have to change that as well um, because if you make F1 a screen hotkey, then it will should get rid of that, so that will be unbound. Um, I'm also going to take this opportunity to mention control groups. Um, control groups are basically how you can store selections of units. So if I have a building, say my nexus selected, I can then hold control and click one and that will save the nexus as control group one and then I can be off doing stuff and I can click one and that will select my nexus for me I don't have to be looking at the nexus for this and I can press the hot key for probe which is E or Q as we just went through and that's good so that you know that, that's the basis of doing things quickly you don't want to click your mouse unless you have to if you want to click on your nexus once with your mouse in the entire game then that's that's your nexus selected control group it done so i recommend that i recommend doing that i recommend grid with uh changed camera that's the best one obviously i've been playing starcraft for years so uh, i've already got into the habit of using the standard um however i've i've changed the cameras and I've been on about that for ages so let's go and do something more interesting let's go into a game 
I'm going to go to the QXC build order tester because I I don't need any opponents for this I'm just going to be on about how to deal with my own stuff so um, this one on the Europe server um, or is it this one uh, one of them the commands don't work ah yes it's this one the one without any fog of war this one works this one uh, some of the commands don't work so we we'll load that up and the first thing when you get into a game you want to save time you want to grab all your workers send them to mine and then you want to create a worker at your building now this is different for Terran and Protoss because Zerg have lava so they can um, build as many workers as they want for Terran ta -da, for Terran you can only queue up at one SCV at a time so when you start a game as Terran you want to click your command center press S then you want to grab your workers and move them out to do stuff um, I'm just going to reset this I'm going to quickly go through the options um, if you have the mouse dexterity you might want to grab on? these right click somewhere on the top half or even the bottom half of your mineral line Roger. grab grab three or four four's good oops that's not T there we go start again but if you don't have the mouse dexterity or you, you want to ah, you me. just get on with something else then just send them all to the middle Blizzard have made it nice that it will do this for you um, there are other ways of grabbing all your workers you can hold the control button uh, now if you control and click something it will grab all of them um, but that's obviously clicking what you can do is use the idle worker key which is F1 as standard although mine's F5 you can hold control click F5 and then you can have your mouse ready you can grab some workers send them over there whatever you like so that's another way of doing it there is a fancy way of if you just spam the idle worker key I'll give you one idle worker then another one then another one then another one then another one and as far as you can see they don't necessarily go like I had one here that was selected while my mouse was here so he was going a long way so I don't recommend that, some people like it and uh, you can do it quite quickly let's give it a go, let's see how well I can do not very well, that was terrible let's try it one more time I blame my keyboard's F key anyway I don't do that, I think that's silly and inefficient I'm going to start again T, click, S for SCV move, I'm just going to do that, bit of that, job done, then I'm going to click my command centre, I'm going to control F1, as I was talking about earlier, I've got my command centre here, um, as also I was talking about earlier, whoops, yeah I should have rallied my command centre here, what I've done is I've right clicked on a mineral, that's set the rally point, the SCVs, that SCV that's building there will go to mine instantly, uh, you can go to an unoccupied mineral field and so the, the next SCV will go there now as I said this isn't a great build order I'm just gonna What's do things really nilly I'm gonna get a bit of gas because I'm gonna need gas eventually I'm gonna get a supply depot now I'm gonna build the supply depot here because it, as Terran against Protoss and Zerg not necessarily against Terran uh, you will want to wall in at a ramp like this because the Zerg and Protoss first unit is melee and the first Terran unit is ranged so you can hide your marine behind your buildings and he can shoot at the Zealot or Zergling for free basically and you can repair the buildings so that's a good way of having a smaller army early on but still surviving and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hold shift and I right click on this mineral field all that does is that queues up an action so his first action is this then the second action start queuing up hold shift right click done it's a good habit to start queuing up actions now I'm gonna grab this guy and make a barracks I make a barracks like this 
You can make one there and then make a supply depot here. I'm gonna make a barracks there. I'm gonna shift Q that guy, I'm gonna press one, S. I'm gonna queue up some SCVs because it's been really bad, I've been talking. I'm gonna grab two SCVs, put them on this. You want three on your refinery, you can just click click even by clicking on your refinery. And that will just tell you how many workers. That's an, a new thing that Blizzard have added, and I think that's pretty good. By the way, you should never have uh, stuff queued up like this because all of these, that's 100 minerals that I could be doing something with at the moment. Um, so realistically, the best thing to do would be to cancel these um, or press the escape key to cancel but, uh, um, and spend that money. And then when that STV is almost done, then and buy a new one. I'm gonna buy a marine, send that. I'm gonna control group this barracks to that. I'm gonna make a factory. Now this is how I hotkey my stuff as Terran, and I'm not a Terran player, so it doesn't happen very often. Grab this guy, make the thing, shift Q up there, one S, S, two, A. So you can see I'm using my keyboard, A for Marine, you can see them up there. Uh, I'm using my keyboard to do things. I'm going to cancel these Marines, because I don't need them, because there's no enemies. I'm going to make that, I'm going to X can't build it because there's nothing there, so what I'll do, I'll place it there and it'll automatically do that for me. That's nice. SSS, refinery. Yes, sir. I'm going to cancel those. I'm going to make an orbital command B. That's good. I'm going to hotkey this marine as 5, because that's what I like. Hotkey this as 3. I'm going to build a thing on that as well. Starport. Cue yeah, that. Yeah. No, they don't need a supply depot at all. Right, there it is. I'm going to get another marine. I'm going to get combat shield. Uh, I'll get stim. Stim's more more fun. I've got... That was just the zerg telling me something happened. I think it's because I started off as zerg and the map didn't adjust. Anyway, here's my orbital command. I've got three spells. Mule. Mule basically is a, a super SCV that you get for a small amount of time. Cast that. Cast it on the mineral field or else it'll just stand where you cast it. They uh, they can be used to repair as well. They repair faster than SCVs. Um, but that does mean that it costs more money to repair per second, but that's fine. I'm gonna build another tech lab. Uh, reactors on these allow you to build your basic unit. So a reactor barracks allows marine a reactor starport allows Viking and Medivac, and a reactor factory allows Hellions, whereas the tech labs allow you to build, uh, build, allow you to research upgrades. You can tell when the tech lab's researching because, actually that's boring, because it, it bubbles slightly. Uh, like that. Uh, I'm going to make a command. C is a scanner switch. Well, it's not. I I'll talk about the supplies. Uh, that's basically uh, you can call down a supply on a supply depot and it will give it an extra supply depot's worth of supply. So it's basically that's basically 100 free minerals now as opposed to uh, about 260 minerals over its lifetime for the mule. So obviously the mule's more cost effective over time, but if your supply block badly, that can be better in the short run, but I recommend the mules in general. Later in the game, you might need scanner sweep, a either to scout because you can cast it absolutely anywhere, which is handy, or to so if you've got some cloaked units killing your base, first make sure you have some units ready to kill that cloaked unit. Then press one, C, scan, and scan as a detector, so you'll be able to see those cloaked units. Now I've got my one marine army over here, hotkey does five. I want this marine in that army as well. So there's two ways I can do that. I can have five, I can hold shift, and click on that, and then I can control group it again. I'm gonna hold control, press five. So that makes a new control group. Or I can control group him as one. Then I can hold, how that guy, hold shift and five, and I'll add that guy to the control group. Either way works, whatever you like. Um, I'm going to make a marine tank 
Oh, I didn't hot key that. 4 D. Blah. There you go. I'm going to get combat shield. See? I'm going to get f these guys. R. 5. I'm going to press A so I attack move out. I'm going to get this guy. Shift 5. Press 5 again. All three of them. Attack move there. So he's going to come out. Put that back up so that nothing can get in my base. Got a tank. I'm going to send him here. I'm going to press E. Siege. There you go. Show you a little tank trick. If I press D, then hold Shift and right click there. Then press E or Shift. Then he will do that for me. That's an easy way of repositioning tanks. Um, if you're doing a tank push of some sort, then that's good. Notice I've uh, supply blocked myself there, so I'm going to pull down this. X, click. Put supply depot as well. Shift Q that guy back up there. Just remembered, sorry. Uh, I haven't got enough SCVs on this refinery. Now I've got. That's good. Medivacs. Shift 5. Shift 5. 5. Go tap 5. Back over there. Drop that. Drop that. I'm not worried about people getting into my base. Now I'm going to put some marines in this medevac, some marines in this medevac. And there's a trick that you can, there's a couple of tricks actually with medevacs. If you put him just on the cliff here, I'll drop them out. Put the medevac there, put that out and then drop. Run them down. If you get the medevac just on the cliff, drop them there, you can go up the cliff, sort of elevator. I'm going to tell them to go there, then shift Q medevac. So they'll do that. Drop, and click on the medevac. So that's that. You can also have the medevac in transit, press D for drop, click, click, doop, doop. and it'll drop on the go. You can get a few of them, put them together. Then you just have to hold the D key and click and click. And you can drop them, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm making note of that because one of your best things as Terran is to drop stuff in someone's base and to do tank pushes. Um, so basically, what you need to do uh, to play is basically you have your command center, make, make SCVs, have your army, control group. Uh, press 1, S, double tap 1, E, double tap 5, move about, attack move, attack move, retreat, 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 attack move. Oh no, we're under fire. Attack move, attack move, stop. Stop. <laughs> there you go, kill my marina. Veterans now. He doesn't get any kills for that, by the way. You only get kills for killing enemy units. Uh, battle's been happening, but I've remembered to make SCVs, make some uh, mules, make some supply depots, 2A, 3S, 4D, double tap 5, get my army going, stim, oh I'm under attack, head of axe heal, stim again, get up, run away, drop, ah, that's why, you don't have those as clickable in game. So yeah, that's Terran. Now we'll do some Zerg. Z. Oh, my stuff's gone. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Zerg have lava, so you don't necessarily have to queue up your first drone first straight away. Probably more efficient. In fact, it is more efficient to send your drones to mine. And then SD. And you can tell the individual egg to go somewhere. So that's being mined. That's not. I'm going to grab that control group one. Rally there. Uh, there's two rallies. That's for attacking, well, non-drones. And that's for drones. Overlords aren't attacking units, but they're not drones. I'm going to send that guy out to scout. Control, control group him as three. One, SD. Send him there. Three, drone. Oh, look, oh, he's scouted. Nothing. Great. SD, send that guy there, SD, now normally at 9 you should get an overlord, um, but I'm not going to, I'm going to get a drone, 
Lucas. Oh no, I've forgotten to get an Overlord, so I'll get an Overlord now at 10. And then I'll send him there. And I'll grab one of these, make an extractor. S, D, cancel. That's the extractor trick, you can do that. You should always 9 Overlord, but if you forget, that's an option. Uh, the other two races don't have options for if they forget, they just have to deal with it. So, I'm going to get an extractor again because this isn't anything about build orders. Got that hotkeyed. I'm like, oh, I found not an enemy base. You, Robert 4, over there. Queue him up. And queue that guy up to go and look at different bases. And put him on patrol. Make some stuff. Do I make a spawning pool? You need that to get everything. And I want to talk a bit about lava. Lava are the most important thing for Zerg because you can't make units without lava. You also can't make drones without lava. Whereas you can make drones and units at the same time as the other races. Um, in one way, that makes Zerg better because they can, like, they can accumulate lava and then use them once they know what they want with the lava. But on the other hand. It means that they have to choose between lava and drones. And you always want drones. You always want money. More money, more money. So when that's done, I'm going to get an overlord. Just because I need one. Uh, what I did there is I double tapped one to go to my hatchery. Um, I think I'll, I'll get an expansion up. Actually, I'll get my queen going. I'll get an expansion up to show you managing Zerg expansions. Because that's... It's different to managing Terran and Protoss expansions. You can just, as Terran and Protoss, have your command center and nexus all on one, and just press one, E, or S, and it's making workers. There's more to it than that for Zerg. So I've got one, I'm going to hold shift, click on that, control one, or I can have, again, I can get that, shift one, Oh, that's irritating. So, shift one on this map apparently gets rid of all my stuff and turns me into Protoss. So, let's not do that again. Just find something to talk about while I remake everything. Beware of, um, actually, the select lava hotkey. The standard is S. But also this stop hotkey is S. So if you think you're selecting on a hatchery but you've actually got all your workers selected and you go select lava, uh, you, you just make everything stop what it was doing. So that's not great, don't do that. Hockey this guy, you go scout for stuff. Don't tap one. S D D D. Oh no! I've forgotten to get an overlord. Make an over. I've got no lava. Because you can only have like three lava at a time. So it's not going greatly. But yeah, let's make an extractor. We'll keep the extractor. I need an extractor for gas. In fact, I don't need gas rages. Just an extractor. And then we'll expand ridiculously early because we don't have to worry about attacks because there's nothing around to attack. You want to send your drone out while there's still money to be collected so when he gets there it's about time to make that. One. Shift. Control one. Not falling prey to the map's weird hotkeys. Rally that. Minerals. That's just that I can talk about. You can the um, for the minerals, mineral lines. Um, you can get three workers uh, on one mineral patch theoretically, but the third worker um, doesn't have a full amount of time. Uh, you can get like basically two and a half workers, two and a third workers on a mineral patch. But if uh, for the first two can both mine one mineral patch perfectly. So they'll swap and they'll swap. And this is very efficient. Um, you can't tell because they stand there for a bit whilst they're just picking up the chunk that they've got off. Um, but they are like they are perfectly efficient there. Um, so 
it's good to like you can if you really want force workers into pairs like this um, but yeah so that's interesting so I've got that I've got that I haven't got a spawning pool so I'm talking about stuff um, we'll set this up set that up don't need to scan that base that's mine let's see off to Expect to nothing now I've got two bases so double tapping the one key will not take me to whichever base it won't take me there if I'm here it'll take me here if I'm over here it'll take me to that one so I've got to switch between the bases um, that is accomplishable in a number of ways you can set up screen hotkeys control F1 move away F1 control F2 move away F2 F1 F2 F1 F2 I should center over this really but I can't get any centered so that's nice another way of doing it is with the backspace key uh, backspace 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 it just flicks between your bases in order so if I built another base here it would go that one then that one then that one then that one blah 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 uh, one way that I like to do it as a zerg player is to use my queens because you have to use queens and we'll talk about that now um, but we'll talk about it in this long closer closer there's a queen grab that press V inject lava I'm going to control group this as zero because I'm weird control, control group that as nine V now what I can do is double tap zero double tap nine double tap zero double tap nine so I can use these to go between my bases I can also um, inject lava by double tap that V inject double tap that V inject uh, injecting lava is amazingly important for Zerg specifically because um, as I said lava are an extra resource for Zerg that the other races don't have to deal with um, so having as much lava as you can is important now you can also uh, inject lava with the minimap um, it's normally harder because your hatchery will be smaller on the minimap but you can it's a bit of leeway you can sort of click over there or there okay there's no leeway at all brutal I don't recommend that because it requires so much mass sensitivity no not sensitivity accuracy um, and the third method is if you have all of your queens on one hotkey so I'm going to use zero and then you'll get zero and then you'll hold the V key and you'll press backspace and you'll Okay, normally backspace will center your building, but because this map's so small, that's not centered. But you'll just do that, and then you'll hold V, and do that, hold V, that, that, and then you, you can just you can hot you can inject lava on every single hatchery um, like within about a second. Even if you got five, if you get the the, the, um, the keystrokes down quickly, but. Um, if you have more hatcheries than queens, um, you will almost certainly send one queen off to inject the hatchery that has no queen. And queens are slow, look at him. So that queen's going to be going for a while. So you'll be missing a queen. So that, that's why I don't like that. Um, it is the most time efficient but it, I don't think it's the most robust method. Um, so yeah, I've got some of that. I'm gonna get zergling speed, some zerglings, inject lava, inject lava. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Oh yeah, I've got those hotkey just one. Re hotkey that to that. To that. Go between bases. I'm not going to talk about any of the tech tree or any of the control things because the Zerga, um, aside from the Infester, which requires so much control, it's, it's hard, and Banelings, which um, I'll do a, a section on control at the end of this or in a separate video, but uh, realistically all you really need to do is have your Zerglings on a hotkey, um, do that, go back to base, do that, go back to Zerglings, I didn't hotkey them. Five, go back to your zerglings, and then while you're controlling your zerglings, you can 
on SDDD SBBB. Um, you can get these and you can tell them to go somewhere. So I've just made these and I've used the minimap and I've told them to go there. So they're going to be hidden safe. Whereas if I put them there and someone attacked, that's not as safe. So there you go. And then double tap 5. Army attack move retreat. Attack move retreat. Spawn lava. Attack move. Moving faster because there's speedlings and they move at the speed of light. Oh, I do like that little that, that thing there. That's pretty good. I like that. Do to go. Setting up some stuff, some waypoints. So you can go mental. Okay. So next we'll do some Protoss. There's a lot more to do in Protoss, I think, to talk about. Uh, there's Chrono Boost and there's Warping. Um, this warping is quite important. So, as I said with Terran, build first, E, select, do that, don't misclick, send your guys to just stand by the mineral field, that doesn't work out very well. Send that guy to a new mineral field, probe. Um, this one might take the longest, I did spend a lot of time on Terran as well. Um, as with Terran, you want to build your supply depot, unless you're doing some sort of rush, you want to build a supply depot on 10. You want to get your pylon on 9 with Protoss. Um, I can almost afford that, so I'll send him. Uh, bases are often bigger, so I'll have to send my probe further. Um, against other Protoss or Terran, I don't recommend walling in, but against Zerg, definitely wall in. Uh, the reason why I don't recommend against Protoss or Terran is because Stalkers and Marines have range, so they can just stand at the bottom of your ramp and kill your buildings, and then you'll not have buildings. And that's not good. So, we'll talk about Chrono Boost. Chrono Boost can be only used on structures, structures that do stuff. You can't Chrono Boost pylons because that'd be stupid. Chrono Boost your Nexus, make it build probes faster. Chrono Boost lasts for just under two probes, so. Um, if you're not great on remembering to go back and get probes built and stuff, since it, the time made is even slower with even lower with Chrono Boost, I recommend having two at once while the Chrono Boost is active. Um, we'll talk about walling in for a bit. Uh, this isn't a very good wall at all. Um, but basically, to wall in for Protoss, you basically need one square of gap put a unit, often a zealot, in there, or you can fully wall off uh, if you really need to, and then kill the building or cancel the building, like so. Horrible waste of money, but whatever. Shift Q. Uh, the reason I've Shift q that when I didn't with the Terran is because the probe doesn't need to be there, so he can be mining whilst that's doing stuff. Press 1, E. C for Chrono Boost. Wait for this to come up. Uh, often people will use the gateway and the cybernetics core to wall off, although your cybernetics core won't be ready for any against a super fast Zergling rush or anything like that, so it depends on your own playstyle. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I want that to be there. I also don't want to have only one pylon powering any of my stuff, because then that will be tragic because the pylon will die and then all my stuff won't do things. Uh, I'm not going to hotkey this. Um, I don't need overlords, I need pylons. But yeah, I'm not going to hotkey this because soon this will be a warp pit. I'm going to put some guys in gas. Um, let me get this. Get some more gas. What? Yes, we're going to talk about that. Actually, just as a, a note, um, idle worker F5. There he is. If you want it, there he is. Go mine. Let's get warp gate. Um, let's get some more gateways to do things with. A lot of money for it. Can only build on things. Put a pile on there for warping in later. Queuing all these up. 
kill some probes, kind of boost. Stalk it. Boost that. I just just note randomly. Um, probe or any worker can do that. But if I take them on hold position, you can't. So that's what you need your zealot to be on hold position so that they can't just barge him out of the way. But if the probe's going to mine, you can phase through matter. Just that again. That's nice. Phase through matter. Might as well go expand. Uh, why am I expanding? I need to expand. Never Corona Boost twice. It's just a waste of Corona Boost. You don't get anything out of it. You just waste Corona Boost. Guys on gas. See how cool that was. Just grabbed three. Um, it's best to grab them there so that they've, they've just given their mineral back. Because if you send this guy, uh, this guy, with a mineral to over there, that, that mineral disappears forever. Oh, over there. That's done. Control, click. G, 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 G. I know there's a, a hotkey, especially for warp gates. It's W, or I think it's Y on grid. And there it is. Four warp gates ready to warp. W. And it's some stalkers. Stalker, stalker, zealot, zealot. Good. Now. Because you have to go back to a pylon to warp stuff in. Control group these is five. One, E, double tap, one, corona boost, E, five. So I've got my army, attack, move forward, uh, uh, uh. then I'm gonna hotkey this. There's two, or three, actually, because I might have a robo bay, or a stargate, as that. Right. Double tap five, then I'm gonna look, ooh, Got some warp gates. I'm gonna double tap three, or S, hold shift, or hold the behind. Da -da 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 -da. Got some of those. Maybe I'll keep that as two. Give me my pill, pill probe. I'll keep those up. That's good. Go there. Ta ta. Don't enjoy this. <laughs> Wait till my supply goes up. There it is. So I'm going to double tap three, or S. Hold the S key. S, S, S. Right click, get rid of that. Dead. That's all my warp pins. Right click, get rid of that. Press five. Shift, control five, attack. Or just grab those. Shift five. Because that shift five isn't a command on this map, so I haven't just killed all my stuff. Good things. Sideways stalker. Oh, apparently, I can't zoom any closer than that because the map's so small. That's unfortunate. Um, what else can we do? Let's do some quick blink shenanigans. I must place that in a power field. There we go. Walk in some stalkers. Those five, don't tap five. Send them off. Attack me over there. These guys will. Catch up eventually. Trouble with these. I am the heart of we are one with the shadows. Okay. So that was easy. Um just gonna wait for blink. I'm gonna talk about while I'm getting blink. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about I've done um I've done shift. Do that, you can shift up commands. Um, you can also use shift and control, so like if you have control and click on a unit, it adds, no it doesn't, it, it clicks on all of those units, you hold shift and you have one unit, it adds another unit to your selection, so you can shift and sweep, or you can control and shift, click, and grab all of those, click, grab all of those, or click, Get rid of, doesn't click, get rid of, click, get rid of. So that's use of the shift key and control for selecting and deselecting units. Uh, if you're in a battle and you haven't hotkeyed your units separately, you can control and click and then move your stalkers and then your stalkers and your zealots and then just your zealots. 
Quick fancy, do da da da. Control click, fire, attack, control, attack, like that. Stop it, yeah. Assembling, and this thing. Control tap 3, war. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Um, talk about force field as well, just quickly. Um, like all the spells. More pylons. Okay. Just kill some stuff. You can kill uh, things like this as well. Which the, the red lines are aggro lines. Nobody likes that guy at the moment. And that guy, and that guy. I'll warp in some sentries. Now you can either press F and shift, hold shift, and now I'll do that and that. I'll do that, or you can just hold the F key. Either way, and I've used up all my energy now. But that, that's two ways of doing force fields. Yay, got blink. Um, I just killed a load of stalkers, but that's fine. Don't need those. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to blink over here. You can only go about that far. You can also shift Q blink. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell them to go there, then there, then there, then press B, blink, there, then right click there. Ta da! And if you've got a lot of um, stalkers, enough stalkers that they can't all fit onto that area of the cliff, if you shift do that, then the ones that blink will immediately get out of the way so you can get them all on. Um, can't be bothered to get that many stalkers. But yeah, so that's Protoss, that's basic Protoss. Army management, have your army, 1E, double tap 1C, double tap 3, warp, Z, blah, 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 blah. hold those, shift 5, 5, attack over there, have a look, attack down, that's all happening. Force field, force field, force field. I've trapped myself. Okay. 